Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg. In this series, we're going to be looking at IK Multimedia's T-Rax Space Delay plugin. Now, this is based on the old Roland RE201 Space Echo. And what's unique about this is that it's not really just a delay plugin. It does tape loop based delays and spring reverb. And the way it combines the two together is kind of what gives it its unique quality and character. So let's start by taking a look at the interface. To start with, we've got the power button, so that'll act as a bypass. And we've also got a reset button to set it back to a default state. We have a peak level button and a VU meter to show the delay output, and this will blink when it's in use. And we have the input control, which adjusts the level going in, obviously, but it emulates what happened on the original hardware where we could overdrive the input to affect the tone of the process signal. And that's often used as part of the effect. So if you want a cleaner sound, we can attenuate it a bit, but boost it to get a bit of the overdriven quality that the original hardware had. We have a simple dry wet knob, fairly intuitive. And of course, if you're using this as a send effect, you want to have that all the way up. But if it's an insert on the channel, we can adjust the ratio of the dry and wet signal with that. Now we have this big mode button here, and this determines which effects are active. So you recall I said that this processor includes tape echo and spring reverb. Well, the tape echo section has three tape playback heads, and they change position in combination with the spring reverb, and the different combinations of them are available in these 12 different modes. And for the sake of a quick overview, I'll go through them. In position one, we have only the tape head one. Here are the three different head controls and the different delay times, but only tape head one is used. Here, only tape head two is used. There, it's only tape head three. So those are simple, single delay type settings. And they get more complex. In four, we use head two and three together. And then in five, we start introducing the reverb. So five is the spring reverb with tape head one, spring reverb with tape head two, and then with tape head three. And then in this position, it's tape head one and two with the reverb. And then here, it's tape heads two and three with the reverb. And then in position 10, we have tape heads 1 and 3 with the reverb. And then in 11, we have all three tape heads and the reverb enabled. And then finally, just the reverb. So there's a wide range of what this effect can accomplish with these different combinations. Now, on top here, we have reverb controls. This is the volume of the spring reverb, and we can pan it. And this is very powerful if you're using mono to stereo. So you can pan the reverb and delays separately. If you're using mono to mono, this won't be active for obvious reasons. There's no panning, but that's for panning the reverb. And then we have bass and treble, which adjusts a low shelf and then a high shelf. And when it's at 12 o'clock position, there's no effect. So we can attenuate or boost. Now here we have delay controls, again, volume and panning for the delays. And then we have the feedback and rate knobs, which are the real bread and butter of this delay unit. Now let's talk about the rate knob. It adjusts the length of the delay and it depends on which mode we're in, which heads are active. But what it also does is it controls the speed of the tape. You recall I said this emulates a tape delay, which is based on a tape loop going over and over again. So when it's at 12 o'clock like this, it's at a nominal normal setting rotating at the normal speed of the tape. But what we can do is dial it clockwise to speed up the tape for shorter delays or we can turn this counterclockwise to slow down the tape for longer delays. So just to give you an idea, here I have it on a piano, and at setting one, we're hearing only the first delay. So you hear the effect of turning it and it changing the tape speed. Now when we're on sync on mode, we get musical subdivisions here, and each of these rate settings gives a different setting to the first head, second head, and third head in relation to the tempo within the DAW. Now we have the feedback knob over here, and uncharacteristically, 11 o'clock is the default position. And as we increase it, the level of the feedback starts oscillating, and at about 2 o'clock, you'll get a self-oscillation where it's kind of like an out-of-control feedback. It's good to have the control and the range that this offers, and of course, you can automate it, and we'll look at all that later in the series. So just to give you a taste of what this sounds like, I have these piano chords playing one note per bar, and here at setting one, we're going to be getting just the first tape head. And as I dial this up, you'll hear more of the delay feeding back. Starting to oscillate. So 
So that's a typical type of effect we would associate with the Roland space echo. Now we have some filtering at the bottom here. We have high pass and low pass filters, and these affect the input signal going into the wet channel of the processor. And they have very wide ranges, so we can really shape the timbre of the delays. The high pass here goes from 10 hertz all the way up to 20K. And then the low pass goes from 40 hertz to 20K. So very wide range. We have ducking, which controls the amount of volume loss in the tape emulation. So we can get it kind of ducking and dropping out and just blending a bit better, which is very natural sounding. And I kind of really like what this does. We'll explore it throughout the videos. We have the stereo reverb that we can turn on or off. And this is only available if we're working in a stereo instance of this or mono to stereo. And then we have FX feed. So it emulates what's in the original unit when it was possible to disable the signal sent to all the effects, commonly referred to as a dub switch. And when it's in the on position, of course, all the effects are working. So you can basically bypass the effects and just run it through the machine. We have noise, which introduces tape hiss noise. And I'm not a fan of that, but it's there if you want it. And then we have tape age, which emulates the effect of aging analog tape. And when we have it counterclockwise, it's like new, clean, clear tape. And the more we dial it up, the more it emulates used and dirty tape with potential wow and flutter and saturation going on. And then we have the sync button to sync the delays to the DAW. And then for each of the tape heads, we have individual panning controls and LEDs to see when they're active. And remember, they're not all always on, depends which mode we're in here. So next video, we're going to start putting these parameters to work and exploring the sonic characteristics and qualities of what they all do.